Hi, this is Kelly from Petika Kelly and Play Learn Talk, and in today's tutorial, I am going to talk to you about creating a play again button. Now, if you create any of these games, Connect Four, Tic Tac Toe, Feed the Animal, anything listed here and more, if you create these games or you want to create them on Boom Learning, I'm highly recommending that you start incorporating a play again button. Now, this feature is really going to set your games apart, make them feel more professional, and they're going to be more user friendly. Okay, it's going to make your game so much easier to play for your user and for students. So let's go ahead and jump in. Um, so to create a built in play again feature, this is going to save your user time. Why is it going to save them time? Because they're not going to have to actually log out of the game. Okay, or not log out, but like refresh it up at the browser level. Okay, sometimes that takes just a couple seconds, but that can feel like a long time when you have a session going with students, right? So if you have a built in feature, it is just going to be convenient and your users are going to really appreciate it. Okay, it's not too complicated to do, but I'm going to show you today how to do not only setting up uh, the pages so that they appear as if they've refreshed, but I'm going to show you how to make a variety of buttons. And at the very end, I'm going to tell you about what my preferred method is and why. Okay. So uh, once again, my name is Kelly from Patika Kelly on Instagram and Play Learn Talk. I make Play Learn Talk games on Boom Learning. And if you are excited about learning how to create games and special features, be sure to subscribe and hit the little notification bell because I make daily videos on how to make Boom cards. Okay. All right. So we can call this button restart, rematch, start over, play again, new game. Doesn't matter what you call it. It's all going to be coded the same way. So we can make a button that has rounded edges like this. This is all going to be done within the Boom Learning Workstation. We can use a text box and give it a border. We could give it a dashed line. We can do various options here. Or we can actually have an image that is a piece of clip art that we have bought or created ourselves and we can import that image and then layer on top of it text, okay? And then make this all um, linked to go to um, a new refreshed page, okay? Now my personal favorite is to pre-make your background. I like to pre-make mine in Keynote. I should say I love to use Keynote, um, but some of you use PowerPoint or Canva or Google Slides and you can do it anywhere you want but I would encourage you to actually import your background and have it pre-made because that way it gives your game a really cohesive feel. Everything has the same theme and color scheme. So, you know, you can do that in the Boom Learning Workstation too. It's just a little bit more tricky in my personal opinion. Okay. So, um, I have pulled up three different games to demonstrate to you. These are games I have created and I just want to show you um, how how you can use these buttons just for your own inspiration. Okay, so let's go ahead and go into the Boom Learning Workstation here first, and we're going to learn how to make these buttons. Okay, so here we have our text uh, button, our text box, and then our image that's layered with another. Um, I personally think number three is the most complicated, um, but I want to show you how to do all three of them. Okay, so let's come over to a brand new page, and we're going to pull out the button first. Okay, so let's just say, let's do play again. Okay, that's our button. Now, if we wanted it to be more square, we would pull this over like that and adjust it. Okay, if we wanna change the font or the size of the font or anything about the font, we're gonna highlight it and then we have all our options up here. I'm just gonna make it bold, okay? And then I do wanna make sure it's centered and it already it already probably was. Okay, so here's our button. We have a square button. If we wanted to change the color of it, we could come over to background and we could give it any color we wanted and it would look like that. Okay, so let's go ahead and make our buttons first and then I'll show you how to link them. I will also point out that you need to go to details at the start of your work um, to designate that it is in flow magic. Okay, so let's grab our text box. So we're going to do the same thing. We'll do play again or let's do rematch. So we'll do rematch. Oops. <laughs> rematch. Okay. Now, the only reason I could see you'd want to use um, a, you know, a text box like this is if you didn't want to give it a border or if you wanted to give it um, like a border that had edges to it. Because we notice over here, this has some nice rounded edges. Sometimes people prefer that more as a button. It kind of feels like a button more in my opinion. But if you wanted to have those sharp edges, you could use a text box. And to emphasize it even more, you can come over to border and select a border color, okay? Now you can also change the intensity of that, the thickness of it by doing this, okay? So, you could do that and then you could change the font color if you wanted as well. So we could do, let's do orange font. 
Um, and we can even do a background color here. So let's do, I don't know, like that. That looks like a weird button. <laughs> um, but you know, we can go with those colors. So there you go. So that's another option that you could do. Um, now I'll also point out here, let's just redo this one. Um, I'm going to get rid of all the coloring, okay? So let's just change it back to, uh, we want it to be black font and a white here. And then we want to change the border back down to one. Okay, so we'll do that. Okay, so here we have our button and I'm going to make sure it's centered. Um, we can change the actual border itself. So I'm going to make it a little bigger so you can see. Um, we can actually change the border style. So here we have dashes if we want dashes and if we increase the width of it, it's going to make it bigger, obviously. Okay, um, so that's an option too. So let's make this this bigger here. Oops. And we'll make the font larger. So let's go with that. That is too large. Okay, so let's make it a little smaller. And I'm going to pull this up so that we don't have that awkward space. Okay, so that is another option. Um, let's see. Now the third option, you can pull out an image. Okay, and let's see. Let me just grab a pumpkin. And we'll just grab this one. Okay, this is actually a navigation button. So you can actually choose to link this one or you can layer it with a text. So we're going to layer it with a text and we're going to say uh, rematch again. Okay, and let's make it a lot smaller. So we'll make it bold and we'll make it smaller. And let's give it an orange background. So now I'm going to put that on top in the center. Now, once again, this is my least favorite one, but you can do this if you want to. So I don't know what's going on here with that font. It looks like it's changing. So let's make sure it's on black. Okay. Now what we want to do is we want to link any of the buttons that we're choosing. So we only need one. Okay. But you are going to link it to the next button feature. Okay. So if you want to do it all at one time, we actually don't want to link this rematch part, the written part, but we're going to click on the button and then we're going to go over here and hit next card. Okay. So they are all linked to whatever the next card is. Okay. Um, now, once again, you're only choosing one to link. Now, let me go ahead and demonstrate to you in the three different decks um, what actually happens when you hit play again or a rematch. And then I'll show you in these that are already pre-made um, how, how it looks, okay? So that is how you make your buttons. If you have any questions, just leave a comment below or reach out to me on Instagram at Petsica Kelly, and I'll be happy to help you. So the first version that we have, this is a Connect 4 game. So I'm going to hit preview. So I'm going to go in and we'll do let's play. So you'll see on the game board, I can put out all the pieces. Okay, so let's see, say that the students have played the game. We'll just put out a lot of pieces right now so you can see it. Uh, oops, got like that. Okay, so now we want to be able to do rematch. Okay, so when they click rematch, if you didn't have that button there, they're going to have to like click out here or go back, right? But instead, we've just created this rematch button for them and it's actually going to refresh the entire page. But if you notice when I hit that, you'll notice the screen actually turns the page. It turns like that, okay? So I typically do two rematch buttons and then I have a blank button here, okay? And you can put something here like done or finished or you can just leave it blank. So let's go ahead and go in and see what that actually looks like. Okay, so I'm gonna scroll down and here is my game section. Okay, so we have this page here. So I have gone in and done all of the coding on this page, okay? And then I have actually just duplicated the page. So I've cloned the selected card after I've done all of my programming and I have taken this button and I have linked it to next, okay? Now you'll notice on this one, I have pre-made my template. That button is already there but is not linked to anything. All I had to do when I came into my Big Learning Workstation was pull out a text box, delete the text from inside, size it to this button, and then link it to next. Now, after I've done that, like I said, I come over here and I clone the selected card two times, okay? 
and that is also linked to next, okay? Now, my third time, I don't have it linked to anything at all, okay? Um, but I do have a text box there should I want to link it to something later, okay? I just do that as part of my creation process, all right? So let me go ahead and show you the other two that I have. This is a free game that you can actually download. It is the summer edition, so three in a row, and I have it as a rematch button, okay? So down here at the bottom, this once again, this is a pre-made template, makes it so easy to do, and I simply layer that text box over the top of it, okay? And then we have a third option. This is a game board set. Now this is also a free game that you can download. And this is also part of a tutorial series where I show you how to make this exact game board, okay? And you'll notice here, I have also pre-made this template because it has the rounded edges, but you could easily make that button yourself in the Boom Learning Workstation, okay? So if you're interested in learning how to make this game board series, or any of these, um, these activities, I will link them in a comment below and pin it to the top. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial and that it was really helpful. Please let me know if I answered all your questions or if you need some uh, further guidance. All right, um, once again, please subscribe if you are interested in having daily videos on learning how to create boom cards on Boom Learning.